Hi, my name is Dave Kennywell. In the next five minutes, I'm going to show you how to build an open source uh, surface water model using the Anuga Hydrodynamic Model and Hydrata.com. So the first thing we do is log on to Hydrata.com using our secure uh, login details, uh, go to the Anuga page, and then create a new project. In this case, I'm going to call it Blue Mountains. So the first thing that'll do is present us with a mapping platform. Uh, the first, uh, then we add our elevation data to the mapping platform by uploading, in this case, a GeoTIFF file. I'm going to call that uh, local DEM, and this contains all the elevation data that we need to convert the rainfall into maps of runoff. So as that is uploading into the, the platform, it's going to be processed into a form that we can visualize. In this case, we have a hillshade layer and we have the actual elevation presented with a color scale as well. So all the layers and results here, we can mix and match the transparencies using these sliders to show more or less detail, depending on what particular task we're looking at doing, whether we're building the model or presenting results. So the next stage is to actually add a boundary to the area that we're going to model. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to draw a boundary slightly outside the, lay the area of the particular watershed upstream of a swamp here in the Blue Mountains just outside of Sydney. Uh, I'm going to call this little model subcatchment A. Uh, of course, you can create lots more boundaries and more complicated geometries. Uh, but for the sake of today's demo, we're just going to keep things simple and create a single subcatchment. So here I've drawn that in into the web browser and I click save and this will then give us the basics of what we need for a hydrodynamic model. So Hydrata Hub is built around the concept of scenarios and this allows us to mix and match different elevations, different boundaries, rainfall conditions uh, and resolutions within our mesh into scenario analysis. So the first scenario I'm going to run here is just going to be something like 100 millimeters an hour for a duration of about 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds here. Um, and that should give us enough rainfall just to query the results. This model will take about 10 or 15 minutes to run. If I give it a mesh size of 5 meters squared, that's the maximum size for each triangle within the mesh that we're running the simulation on. So I save that simulation and then hit the build button. Once it's built, uh, I can either download it, which we'll talk about later, or run. So when I hit run, the package is uh, shaped up and shipped off to uh, Hydrata's compute servers where it's run in the cloud. And this gives us some really powerful computing performance options uh, to run models large models very fast using as much cloud compute as we want. Uh, I'm just going to skip forward from the statuses at 10% now. I'll pause the video and come back at 100. There we go. And now once the simulation is complete, whether you're running it on your local laptop or in Hydrata's cloud, um, the results will be uploaded back into the viewing uh, map. So the results that we get here appear automatically. We have uh, the first one we'll look at is the depth. So as you can expect, this is the, the depth of rainfall across the watershed from the simulation. Um, and here it gives you a good indication of where ponding might occur, different significant flow paths that occur throughout the watershed. Um, and in this case, you can see quite clearly there where the road itself is collecting water and then funneling it down in, in a certain pattern towards the swamp at the upstream end, at the northern end of our catchment. Uh, one of the other products that we get is called the Velocity Depth product, which is essentially an integral that gives us an indication of flow. As you can expect, it gets higher the higher up, the lower down in the watershed that you get. Um, and then finally, if we look at the velocity distribution across the watershed, then you can see the very high velocities there in the, the steep part of the main stream. But also interestingly, this provides us some real 
key insights into how the water is flowing through the upper ends of the catchment. Uh, in this case, you can see there in the airfield where the water is flowing precisely off the different parts of the airstrip there. So this is all, uh, Anuga, as you know, is an open source model written in Python, um, which enables us to download it just as easily and run it locally on the computer. So in this case, I'm going to, instead of running it on Hydrata server, I'm going to run this second scenario on my local computer. So if I save and build, instead of uh, hitting the run button, once the build is finished, I can hit the download button. And this will package up the entire Anuga project into a form that you can download onto your hard drive. Uh, and once you have Anuga installed, you can then run the simulation or, or modify the simulation as you need um, uh, on your local machine. This also gives you a good archive uh, option if you're working in an environment that requires records of every uh, model run. Each run has a unique identifying number, which enables quality control over uh, what the inputs and outputs are. As you can see here, all the inputs have been packaged up. The boundary we drew is packaged up as GeoJSON. The elevation has been converted into a UTM format and provided as a GeoTIFF. And all the scenario data is stored there as scenario.json. So that about wraps up our very quick preview of the Hydrata platform. Uh, we're excited about the potential for collaborative modeling in an online format like this. Uh, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch if you want to be involved. Thank you very much.